And we are back. What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to CPA Reviewed. <clears throat> I think this is episode 33, so <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't quit after number two. <clears throat> but here we are. So, all right, well, as you can see, well, for those of you listening to the podcast, you can't see this, but if you watch it on YouTube, you'll see that I switched my office around a little bit, and um, my kids came in my office today, and totally messed it up while I was working and so I was kind of doing a a hybrid of babysitting and working so (laughs) so then I started cleaning up for the video I was like eh whatever and you know I my hair is kind of doing this thing Uh, about last April we we bought 15 baby chicks (laughs) chickens (laughs) and um, I'm from the I'm from the city, and uh, we then moved out in the country, and so this is my first endeavor <laughs> for for being a farmer, and it's, uh, I mean, it's I mean, I'm not even a farmer, I, but um, I have to go outside and do chores in the morning now, and so it was like 20 degrees this morning, and um, my wife's like, you know, you have to go out and tend to the animals, <laughs> like what? So, um, so I went out there and anyway, long story short, had to break the ice on the water and, and, um, so anyway, the whole point of that is that, got the, got the hair a little windblown today and all that, but anyway, the show must go on. Um, I almost, I almost put on my, uh, my, my, uh, (laughs) redneck steel hat that I got. Uh, for free when I bought a chainsaw a week or so ago, but <clears throat> we'll just we'll just roll like this. So uh, anyway, well, welcome back to the show. Um, hopefully, this one will be an improvement on the last one. Last last one wasn't too bad. So we have uh, we have about twelve questions to get to. I don't know if we'll get to all of them, but um, uh, today's water of choice is uh, Ethos water, and I, I believe. <clears throat> that when I bought this this plastic but well the original bottle of water um, I believe I donated a nickel to um, helping children get clean water so <clears throat> here's to clean water all right <clears throat> James says I have 18 months to retake and pass um, far reg and auditing do you recommend focusing on one section at a time? You know what? I'm just going to move this window over here. If you ever have a chance to um, get dual monitors, highly recommend it. Because <laughs> once you work with dual monitors, you'll you'll never want to go back. All right. See, this way I can kind of look at the camera. There we go. Man. James says, I have 18 months to retake and pass FAR reg and auditing. Um, do you recommend focusing on one section at a time until I can pass that section or rotate through the section so I don't get burned out? <clears throat> well, uh, I think it's good to try to stick with one section and pass it if you can. So, like, um, But then there's a balance because after you sit down and after you take your exam, you know, you just don't want to twiddle your thumbs for however long it takes to get your scores. And so what do you do? So maybe you take financial. Um, so let's say that you take it like uh, January 2nd, 2013, for instance. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so you, so you take your exam then. And then you jump into, let's say, regulation right away. And you take it mid-February. Well, um, you should get your your financial score early February. And so instead of just sitting around and restudying financial for a whole month and a half, it, it, it you might as well jump in and take take regulation. And then, and then you can go back and retake financial if you have to. I mean, it doesn't, in, in my opinion, if you have to retake a section, you really shouldn't cut corners anyway. You should um, 
you should really pretend like you didn't take the exam at all, start from scratch. Because what happens is when people cut corners, then they, like when they last took their exam, they were, they were, they were exam ready for um, deferred taxes, for pensions, for bonds, for inventory. They were exam ready. And so, so I keep, keep scratching my, I don't know, I got these, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Long story short, um, I was out in the woods running my, <laughs> running my new chainsaw. And because um, I'm a big hillbilly, I guess. Um, but apparently, even in the wintertime, there's chiggers. And it's like, like yeah, chigger bites. Anyway, but <laughs> that's TMI. So I just don't want you to think I had something weird going on there. But it's just chiggers. <laughs> so... The show, the show is already headed south. <laughs> so, um, so far we covered anyway. Um, so, and I lost my train of thought. But essentially, you you, you do not want to cut corners, and um, so take your exam. Move on to the next section if you have to. You can easily then you can take your second exam and jump back into the first if you come up short. All right, let's move on to, to another question and. Uh, write this shit. Sarah says, my last score report for BEC showed I was only weak in the written communication portion of the exam. How do I improve this area? Uh, your written communication should have a, a thesis statement, um, like three supporting points in the, in the main body, and then the conclusion. So what you should do is <clears throat> like maybe get the Wiley Test Bank, practice their written communications. You can either, either, you can, uh, you can either go, you can also go onto the forum and say, Hey guys, I got this written communication that I want to write about um, cost accounting. Will one of you grade it for me? And people will give you some pointers. So um, if, you're, if you're weak on written communication, practice writing essays. So a lot of people are weak on written communication. Uh, back in the day, back in the day, it's like a year ago or whatever, <clears throat> um, I personally could can um, BS when I write, um, <laughs> as evidence in my posts, um, my blog posts. A lot of them are just anyway. Um, so um, I could, if I knew keywords, I could make something up about um, internal rate of return, <laughs> and just. Well, that doesn't make sense because that's a BEC topic and there wasn't BEC essays back then. But anyway, uh, people who can write well, um, write reasonably well and BS had an ex- had an advantage on um, auditing financial and regulation uh, because, well, you could score some easy points. Um, so if let's maybe your, your stupid essay was a difference between you know, 74 and a 75 and you can write well. But people who maybe have English as a second language or are not as good a writers. Um, They struggle with written communication. So long story short, just practice them. Practice writing good essays. And you want your thesis statement. You want three supporting points. And then you want your conclusion when you wrap it up. And you can do what you want. But I always finished my essay with um, Jeff Elliott CPA. So that's kind of calling my shot there and I guess it worked (laughs) Um, but you do what you want to do Rose says where do I find the motivation to work study and take care of my family while my spouse works it's been a rough two and a half years and I'm exhausted do you have any advice Um, Rose that's tough because um, while I worked and studied studied and uh, was a dad and husband and all that um, I had the benefit of my wife stayed at home with the kids and so you know when I came home at night things were a little bit different versus having two uh, spouses work um, so how do you stay motivated well first of all you have to have a plan you, um, you have to have a schedule you have to like if you if you live your exam life by default you won't study there, there will always be something more interesting to do than study. And um, so you really need a written plan. So maybe check out my study planner. 
if you go to another71.com and in the header click free and in the nav bar click click free you'll get that um it, but it's also important to have a spouse that um that is on on board with everything and if you have a spouse who's always giving you a hard time about studying and always guilting you and stuff that's tough i had the benefit of um, my wife really wanted me to pass and and so for the first couple of years i was jacking around with the exam i didn't really want to study i came i <laughs> i was working in public accounting and so i'd come home and want to play madden <laughs> So, I mean, in, in, uh, when I first started, our, our youngest was like, you know, a baby. And so, you know, it wasn't like I was being a deadbeat dad by playing Madden. But um, now I would be deadbeat dad if I played Madden. But um, so, um, actually, that's not true because now I play Madden. <laughs> I don't play Madden with my kids. I play um, NFL Blitz because it, it takes like, it just requires like two buttons. They can just pass or jump or something so we play nfl blitz so uh daddy daycare um anyway so um, and it's also cool because my kids anyway i won't i will not digress <laughs> but uh long story short um my kids like to play video games now so <laughs> that's cool um but uh your spouse really has to. Your spouse really has to be on board. And if your spouse is willing to sacrifice, like, hey, um, hey, honey, I will take the kids on Saturday so you can go to the library. <clears throat> then, if they do that, then when when they're at home or or maybe in your free time, if they see you just being all selfish and always on Facebook and always on another seventy one dot com, no. That's actually okay. That's the high, that's highly recommended when you take the exam. Is just spending hours on the form. But uh, <laughs> um, but if they if they are willing to sacrifice, and if you're not using your time um, in a family friendly manner, let's say, then that's going to get old for them real quick. So if they sacrifice, make sure that you are doing your part. And as far as motivation goes. Um, you have, to, you have to ask yourself a question. Why do I want to be a CPA? Why does Rose want to be a CPA? Is it because everyone else is telling Rose that she needs to be a CPA? Or does Rose really want it because of career, just because just she wants to pass? Um, I got to the point to where I, did, I, did, I, wasn't, I was not working in public accounting anymore. I didn't really need it for my job. But I just decided that it was always going to bug me if I didn't pass it. So, uh, I just took it. And, um, so now I have the good fortune of, uh, doing CPA exam related stuff full time and, um, making videos with toys on the floor. So, <laughs> so you have to figure out why do you want to pass? And if it's, if it's, for if, if it's a goal of other people that other people have for you, it's not going to work. It has to be a goal that you want to pass the CPA exam. And let me tell you, again, it doesn't matter if you want to be a CPA for your whole life. It doesn't matter if you want to work in public accounting because being a CPA will, I mean, this, okay, as long as you keep your license current, <laughs> um, being a CPA will, will benefit you down the road. Like you're at church and I don't know, just the fact that you're a CPA gets you invited to the budget committee meeting. Of course, maybe you don't want to be invited to that, but you get the point. It adds, it will add credit, it will add lifelong credibility. So, uh, Jenny says, is there any real advantage to being licensed in the state in which one lives? As long as it's not a job requirement, I'm a candidate in Indiana and recently moved to Iowa. I don't want to pay the fees to transfer my license or take the ethics exam. I don't think my employer will mind that I'm not licensed in the state. Is there anything that would make me want to pay the extra money to be licensed in Iowa? Um, for me personally, just the fact that I don't have to worry about, um, well, I mean, 
let's say, let's say that you send an external email and, um, you know, you can put Jenny CPA, but I guess, I guess you could put in parentheses, Indiana. Um, I don't know. What is it? 200 bucks, something like that. 200 bucks to not the jack with it. And, um, and then let's say, okay, let's say you get downsized and, <clears throat> and you need to move quickly to find another job. That's just one less thing to worry about getting, <clears throat> jumping through all the hoops, <clears throat> to, excuse me, to get licensed and all that. So, <clears throat> man, my voice is, bah. so I would just go ahead and do it. I would go ahead and, and pay the fee, take the stu- stupid ethics exam, and uh, for me, it would be worth it. Hassan says, I'm uh, I'm studying for auditing, and my exam is coming up next month. I, w- I will not receive my video re- review materials until the mid of the, until the mid until mid month. Is there any way that I can study and pass the exam the first time? All right, Hassan is studying for auditing. Exam is in a month. It's not getting CPA review materials till mid month. Is there any way to pass the exam first time? Well, I would just postpone your exam because I would I would study for auditing a good a good month, a good five to six weeks at least. How do you pass auditing the first time? Um, <clears throat> well, follow the Ninja study framework. So go to another71.com, click free. You'll get the study planner with the Ninja framework. And, um, you know, I don't want to always plug my own stuff, but uh, the Ninja Notes, Ninja Audio, Wally Test Bank, great supplementary materials, but uh, really you just need to study your butt off and that's how you pass the first time. And if you don't pass the first time, get back in there and study your butt off again. So it's that that's really it. Get a CPA review course that matches your learning style. Get some good supplementary materials like the Ninja stuff or whatever you want to use. Study your butt off. Sacrifice. Um and do a lot of multiple choice questions. That's how you pass. Yim says, I'm taking the exam in 2013 and interested in the Ninja Notes to study along with my 2010 review course material. However, I think there were lots of updates and changes since then. Is it worth my money to purchase the 2013 material for my review course? Yes, I would. I mean, if you had 2012, I'd probably say no. But 2010 materials, they were written in 2009. And, um, so yeah, I would get the 2013 materials. Elizabeth says that the tragedy of the hurricane aside, the extension of the testing window presents me with a dilemma. Currently I'm scheduled for November, for November 29th. So should I take advantage of the extension and push my test back over another weekend or just buck up and assume I'm not going to increase my score by studying one more week? Keep my exam on the 29th of November. Well, normally I would say just keep it, but uh, you have Thanksgiving to take into account there. And so, you know, Thanksgiving, let's see, Thanksgiving is on a Thursday this year. Um, so you can assume that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of that week are all going to be a bust. And so are you really going to jump in on Saturday and Sunday and study? I don't know if you're on the road visiting family or whoever. Um, you know, then Monday comes around and you're back at work and, uh, you got a case of the Mondays and, uh, you get home from work. Yeah. I just really don't want to study. And then Tuesday rolls around and, oh, look, your exam is in a few days. So maybe it would behoove you to, um, and I just want to use the word behoove, (laughs) uh, to extend. So. I would, yeah, if they will let you, and if you were affected by the hurricane and they'll let you do all that, I would. Zubin says, I graduated a year ago with a BS in accounting and have been working for a small startup for the past year. 
My goal is to work for a CPA firm, big four, regional, or local. Do you think I should continue my work and pass the CPA exam and apply to firms after completion of all parts, or should I go back to school for a master's in accounting and get another shot in the recruiting process? Mm. Well, I don't know the like. I don't know the likelihood of you landing in a, a job as a master's student um, versus being in the workforce and just kicking butt, taking names, passing the exam. But um, all else being equal, I am going to stay in the workforce um, and keep that keep that career track going, keep that work history going. Um, I don't know, to a potential employer, it might seem kind of weird that you were working and then just left and went back to school. I mean, school school kind of seems like a place that people like retreat to um, when, uh, when uh, the real world gets too rough. And um, so they might wonder, huh, well, why didn't they just go to night school and get their MB, their executive MBA like so many other people do? Um, I would I would stick with your your job um, and pass the exam, and then when you're full full blown CPA, you can you can apply to uh, your firms, and look, they don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to pass the exam. Of course, I mean. I did not work in Big Four, but I'm sure that Big Four Regional, you name it, uh, can't job candidates who say, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna pass the exam." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, talk is cheap. Anyone can say, "Oh yeah, um, I'm gonna pass the exam," but saying that you're gonna be a CPA is not the same as being a CPA, and um, so that's just one less thing that they have to worry about. And so I would stick with your job. But, you know, maybe, maybe talk to someone who, maybe talk to a, like a career counselor. Like, you know what? Call up a uh, recruiter in your area and uh, run the scenarios by them. And though a, a recruiter will have their finger on the pulse of the job market and, and can advise you as to whether or not, or as to which path is better for you. But my guess is that they'll say, stick with your job. Ricky says, I recently graduated and I've, and I've been having trouble finding a job due to what most accounting firms consider a low GPA. I would imagine it would be easier if I had t- some experience, but it's hard to get experience when I can't get a job in the first place. Uh, do you have any tips for those of us who did not have spectacular GPAs? Yes, um, because... Um, a little bit of transparency here. Back in the day, uh, well, okay. <laughs> here is Jeff. <laughs> when Jeff started out, he, uh, no, yeah, I'm going to stop talking in third person. I'm not a professional athlete. Um, when I started out in school, I had no idea what I wanted to be. And so I started out in engineering. Why? Because I heard, en- <laughs> I heard engineers make a lot of money. And so I started out in the engineering school. Um, and then um, I quickly figured out that chem, chem 1 and trigonometry were not for me. And uh, But it took me a couple of retakes of those classes to figure that out. So, um, and then um, I got introduced to something um, at school um, <clears throat> called beer <laughs> and, and I I found that I enjoyed beer a lot and so um, and I enjoyed beer more than than uh, than going to class and so consequently I did not make the Dean's role my uh, my freshman semester I made the, the uh, hey we're about to kick you out of school role <laughs> And, uh, so, um, after, huh, it's kind of funny how it, how my, how my, my undergrad history, um, 
parallel my CPA exam, <laughs> my CPA exam life. Uh, I start, I started out slow, didn't really have a lot of motivation, and then when I decided I wanted to do it, uh, you know, I rocked it. But um, so, but anyway, so um, let's <laughs> those early those early year indiscretions cost me. When I woke up one day and thought, oh, wow, you know what? When I graduate here, I should probably find a job. And um, at that point, I had I had met a, a girl that um, I wanted to marry. <laughs> and so um, I did not have a job. And so how do you how do you go to your um, future father, <laughs> your future father in law and and. Uh, you know, I asked his permission to, to marry her and all that. And uh, he's like, okay. Well, he's like, so um, what are your job prospects? Like, Ugh. oh no, I need to get one. And so, but anyway, long story short, my, you know, I, I graduated with my accounting degree, but my, my GPA sucked. And um, so I had to, I had to get my job through. I, I, I knew someone who knew someone who owned a small CPA firm and um, I was I was looking for and I was job hunting and then 9/11 happened and so uh, you know that was like pre socks and like the job market sucked then and then everything tanked and it was tough finding a job back then and then I was facing this uphill battle because my GPA was terrible. <clears throat> and um, you know, I mean, I mean, it was embarrassing. It was like one of those things that you know, it, it's you know, <laughs> praise God that I that I uh, that I that I found a good job and started my career. But um, anyway, long story short, I started out as a staff accountant in a small in a small firm, and just you know, I I had 15, 15 clients that I was responsible for, and did all their book all their book work. You know, 941s, 940s, uh, FUDA, SUDA, you know, tax returns or um, sales tax returns, liquor, t- <laughs> liquor, st- <laughs> I had a liquor store as a client, so I did liquor, liquor tax returns and um, so you name it, I did it and it was a really good experience. And so the whole point of that is that, you know, and I'm not. I'm I'm not proud to admit that that my that my GPA sucked and but that's just how you know that's just my story and um, and I, I share that all of that with you to say that um, once you get your job once you get your foot in the door and land your first job um, unless unless someone's just just real stupid they're not going to w- once you get your first job. Then subsequent jobs, they're not going to ask you what your college GPA was. Now, some of you might be like, I, I'm telling you, for the most part, <clears throat> future employers will not ask you what your future GPA was. So once you get your first job, the slate is wiped clean, especially once you pass the exam. So once you have your first job, you pass the exam, and you start building up your work history, um, you know, and you get a, a good resume, um, and when you, so your 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 slate is, is wiped clean. But when you walk into that first job, that's when you start to build your reputation, your your career reputation. So, um, it does not matter what you did in college. Or, or who you were, or how lazy you were, or what mistakes you made. Once you roll in on day one, that's when you start to make your reputation. And how you work at your first job, when you're at work, you're actually working. You're not screwing around. Um, you're not taking hour and a half lunches, whatever. Uh, as you build that professional reputation for being a hard worker, for being a go getter, for being a go getter. For being a certified butt kicker, uh, you know, someone hands you a spreadsheet, you just hammer that baby out. Um, like, you know, you uh, go to your boss and say, "Hey, 
what can I do to make your job easier? Like, wow, man, this, this uh, rookie kid, man. And so, and so then, uh, after your first job, when you find a different job, you want to, you want to, um, take another career path. You want to go work for a bigger firm or whatever. You won't, you won't feel bad about putting your past, I mean, about putting your old, your old boss as a reference because, because you did such a good job for them. Yeah, they're sorry for, they are sorry to see you go, but you did such a good job for them while you were there that, you know, darn it, they are glad to, to recommend you and they were just thankful for the time that you were there. So again, it doesn't matter what you did in college, get that first job. You're going to have to network. You're going to have to find someone who knows someone who knows someone. You know, um, you got this buddy whose dad owns a mechanic shop and he takes his book work to this CPA down the street. Find out, find him out, find out who that is and get the name and say, hey, I hear you do Bob's mechanics books. Um, I'm friends with Bob's son. I just passed uh, from... Kansas State University, go K State, number one in the BCS, by the way. Um, and uh, you know, I'm studying for the CPA exam. Hey, tax season's coming up. I would love it if I could just come do some tax returns for you, lighten your load. I'm a quick learner. I'm I'm good at I'm I'm good with uh, with Excel. You know, what can I do to help you? And that's how you get your first job. So, all right. Well, uh, I think we'll end it there. I hope this has been helpful. Um, and uh, anyway, please keep your questions coming. Go to another71.com. Click in the upper hand cor- right uh, upper right hand corner. Click Ask Jeff, or shoot me an email, Jeff at another71.com. And uh, I hope you're having an excellent day, week, month. <laughs> keep it real, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Hey.